Cynthia Matthew here from FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses for your brand new Ray-Ban 5228 color 2012 size what size is that? I can't see up close 5317 the 2012 is the dark Havana and let me go ahead and begin and show you what I'm going to do I'm going to pop the original of course this is your let me set this down for one moment. This is your Ray-Ban case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth that comes with it. I'm just going to move it aside while I work. I'm going to take your original demo lenses, the cheap plastic ones that Ray-Ban puts in there when they send them to me. Set those down and I'm going to trace your frame in my Italian Santinelli LE1000 patternless edger. It is going to trace the shape of the left lens. And then it's going to trace the shape of the right lens here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy the frame and you get free single vision prescription lenses. All you did is pay the small upgrade to get the anti-glare coating which eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But I'm just going to pull the shape of your lens up on the computer. I'm going to type in your pupillary distance which is 58. These are the thinner, lighter weight, unbreakable polycarbonate lenses. I'm cutting it on the soft cycle because of the anti-glare. And this is what an old school name, Xyle, which is an old school name for plastic, which is what this is. Now the new chemical composition is actually an acetate. I'm not a chemist, but that's how they refer to them now. So your right lens is minus six and a quarter sphere. How's that? You like the thickness of that? Don't you worry, it's not gonna be that thick. It's like a bowl. It's thin in the center and thicker at the edges, but don't you worry. We're going to be good with this. So I'm going to turn the power drum on my Marco 101 lens armor to minus six and a quarter. Put the lens in. Actually, let me zero everything out. Okay, we're good. Now I'm going to turn it to six and a quarter. I'm going to put your lens in, find the optical center, clamp it down into place, and then I'm going to put some dots on your lens. I don't know if you can see them, so I'm going to darken them. I'm going to make that one the right lens. And now let's do the same for your left, minus four and a quarter, minus a quarter at 150. At 150. And then type in minus four and a quarter. Spin the power drum to minus four and a quarter. Put that in, find your optical center. Get everything locked in, clamped in. Check your astigmatism correction. Everything lines up perfectly. And now let me put some dots on these lenses. At least darken the ones that are there. And that is the left. The reason why they're going across like that is I've got a straight line that I've got to get them on so that I'm right there on the optical center. So there actually is a block that is going to go on this lens and hold it in place in the lathe while it's cutting. So what I need to do is put my double-sided sticky tape the black side is the sticky side. This is a 3M pad by called the Leap Pad. I'm going to peel off the sticker on this side, which makes it nice and sticky, and I'm going to put the block on lens. Now let's go ahead and do your left lens. I'm going to do the same thing. Put a block into the blocker. Stick the one side of the sticker to that. Peel that away, making it double-sided. Get everything lined up in the crosshairs of my scope vertically and horizontally. Now, your anti-glare coating, it's also a hydrophobic coating, meaning that it hates water. So it's going to make it a little bit slippery while cutting. So I'm going to put one more sticky pad on the back side so it does not slip while I am cutting. I'm going to put the lens in the chuck and hit start. The first thing that's going to happen is the LMU is going to come down and trace the shape of your frame onto the lens to make sure it's large enough to cut out, as we say. And of course it is. But it's just a routine measure that it does. It's measuring the concave side of the lens first, which is closest to your eyelashes. Then it's going to move over and trace the convex side of the lens, which is away from your face, using the calipers to measure the thickness, knowing where to put the bevel as we begin. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom. It's the lighter color wheel on the left. It's like a very heavy grit sandpaper that's going to grind away the polycarbonate material. This wheel in the center with the channel is going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the door in a moment as it gets loud, but for now I just want to see your lens touch the cutting wheel.
So your lenses are 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. They are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB, standing for ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin to the sun, so this is permanent sunscreen for your eyes. And how's this for fun? You see the print? When I move your lens over, it minimizes. Without your glasses on, everything looks much larger than it really is. When you put your lenses on, it shrinks down. In fact, your prescription, Cynthia from Argentina. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. But your right eye is minus six and a quarter sphere. Your left eye reads minus four and a quarter, minus a quarter at 150. The unit of measurement that we do in opticianry is called the diopter. That is spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. You've heard of ounces or gallons or pounds. We use the diopter to measure. Everything is in quarter increments within the diopter. So it starts at 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1, and so on until it climbs up to minus six and a quarter. That is 25 steps of correction. So your right eye, without your glasses on, everything is way, way, way too large and appears in real life. You put your glasses on, it shrinks down to the correct size. Your left lens, minus four and a quarter, minus a quarter at 150, you actually need 17 steps of correction to get everything the correct size. However, you only need one step of correction for your astigmatism. And there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. It comes and goes. It fluctuates. The first box, these first numbers, gets everything the correct size. Your astigmatism is what makes everything fuzzy. So the letters P and F look alike, sixes and eights. So when you put your glasses on, it gets everything the correct size and then takes away the fuzzy edges. This last number just tells us where to turn the knob to make everything nice and fine-tuned. So, as you can see, your lens is still cutting. It is still flat at the edges. Just like a nickel, if I were to take it out, it would stand up on its own. It's going to move over and put the bevel onto the lens. The polycarbonate lenses cut dry. You see water running in the background. But in just a moment, water will come in and start to clean away all the debris that's on the lens, like this little piece here. That is optical sawdust, if you will. water will splash on the lens. Let me see if I can clean that off there. So Cynthia from Argentina, hopefully you're enjoying watching your glasses being made right here in America. Everything is American made. Well, it's an Italian firm that owns Ray-Ban now, but in 1992 there used to be an American company in Rochester, New York called Bosch & Lom. They still handle contacts, but they sold their glasses part of it. Well, they sold the, the Ray-Ban line that they started to Luxottica, which is an Italian firm. Now, dried your lens off so it's not slippery, but you still have a little bit of rough edges around the edge of your lens, so I'm going to take my hand stone, which is completely flat, I can put my hand on it while it's running. It just uses friction. And I'm going to go around your lens and put what's known as the safety bevel. Now I'm going to scrape away this debris with my thumbnail. I do this so much, I've got a V-shaped bevel worn into my thumbnail. My friends call it an occupational thumbnail. So I use my thumbnail to scrape everything off. Once I get it all off the lens, I drop it on the counter. And from there, I wipe it on the floor. And as I love to say, because, hey, i got to entertain myself while I'm doing this, 
Kids, I went to school for years to learn how to wipe stuff on the floor. Stay in school. You can learn how to be messy like me. So to see if it fits, I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner. And using my thumbs, I press down at the nose. It's still a little snug. So I want to take uh, one-tenth of a millimeter off of your lens. Let me program that into the computer. And then hit the retouch button. I always start a little bit large. You can always make a lens smaller. You can never make it bigger. So I start a little large and work my way down. Once I get the size of the right lens done, I will flip over and do the left. So it's just going to the bevel wheel and slowly but surely it's going to go round and round until a tenth of a millimeter comes off around the edge of your lenses. Now a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails on my PD stick. I'm going to take one tenth of that off going all the way around the circumference. But your, your anti-glare coating that you have on the lens, whoa, I got you, I got you, you're not going anywhere. The anti-glare coating eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But it also eliminates glare from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead lights, fluorescent lights. The second feature, it's three features in one. The first component was the anti-glare. The second feature is that it makes for much better eye contact. When someone's, it's a reflection free lens. There are no reflections, so when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. So it makes for much better eye contact. And then the most important cosmetic feature, and some people buy it for this reason alone, if someone takes a picture of you with a flash, you won't see the flash lit up in the lens. Some people get it just for that reason only. Forget the fact that you'll see so much better out of them, and especially at night during the daytime, but the third feature that I like, the practical side, is they put the strongest scratch coating of any lens onto these lenses to protect the anti-glare coating. So you get a very strong scratch coating with this lens. So I'm just going to dry your lens off one more time. Back to the handstone. Just put the safety bevel, use my thumbnail to scrape everything off. I bet you don't know what happens next. That's right, onto the counter. And this time, a new technique behind the back. Woo, look at that technique, kids. Kids, kids, stay in school. Learn to be like me. All right, so I'm going to check to see if it fits. I'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner, which is closest to me, with the frame turned upright. And then using my thumbs, I'm going to press down at the nose. It snaps right in perfectly. So I'm going to flip this over and then cut the left lens. I hit the star button and just like before, it's going to come down and trace the shape of your frame onto the lens. And while that's down, let me see if I can clean that up some. You know, I, I was expecting people over and they were going to see and I didn't even dust. Yeah, see now, now it's nice and clean on there, those calipers. If your lens were very, very thick, which everyone thinks they are, not yours, I mean their own, sorry about that. This will move the bevel to the front so it never protrudes out, so cosmetically you'd never have a problem with a prescription that was twice this strong in this frame. This whole process takes about 15 minutes. It is 4.35 on Saturday, March 29th. 55 degrees and raining in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina, at least according to my Samsung Gear watch. So, your right lens is done. I want to go ahead and inspect it. I'm going to take this block off with this little tool that pops it off. I'm going to peel the sticker. Well, actually, let me dry everything off again. Peel the sticker off. Hey, I just lost my red dot. That's all right. I'll put another one on there. I'm going to put this back into the lensometer. Verify that it's minus six and a quarter. And put a, oops, come on, let me get everything lined up perfectly. Now I'm going to put the red dot back on there. And let me use my pen to darken that because I want you to see that a little bit later on. <coughs> so your right lens is done and you can see it is spherical. It does not protrude outside of the frame. Everything looks very good with your lens. Except when I move it over my print. How's that? 
And here's a cool effect. As you notice, when I pull downward, the words in the background go down with the lens. Just the opposite with a plus lens, a magnifier. Let me get one of those out. This is the opposite. In fact, when I hold this up over your lens, well, let me move this in the background. The letters go in the opposite direction. As I move the lens down, the words go upwards, if you can see that. Whereas with yours, let me flip it over, they go in the same direction. This one goes in the opposite direction. That's how the light reflects through. That's actually what I do is I bend light for a living. That's my superhuman powers. I take the light that comes into your eyes all scattered and I focus them down into a point focus into one dot right there on your pupil. But if I were to hold your lens up over my camera lens, it would be somewhat distorted as you look through there. But when I put this lens there in its place, it should be clear through your lens now when you look at something when I move this away you can see how the image changes or I can do it in front pretty cool effect huh a plus six lens will cancel out your minus six lens these are all the lenses that I stock I can have just about anything ready to ship in ten minutes I have them with without anti-glare and then all the lenses with anti-glare in the purple packages like you have. I see some sawdust. We'll pull that off and drop it back in. Unless you wanted to keep it as a souvenir. And it looks like we are done. We pull this out, dry everything off. Again, you still have a little bit of rough edges on there from the cutting wheel, so I'm going to use my hand stone to smooth everything out. Use my thumbnail to scrape away the last of that optical debris. Onto the counter. And then, you know what, just to make my wife happy this one time, I'm going to clean everything up and then drop it in the trash can. Because who has time to go from here to the trash can? That's just too much work for me. So, all right, let's see if this fits into the frame now. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner, closest to me. Then using my thumbs, I press down. It snaps in perfectly. So I need to take this block off. And... I want to actually measure so you can see before I clean those red dots off I am going to hold my PD stick up and from the center of this dot which is your right lens to where you measure on here we actually get 58 millimeters it's just a couple ticks just shy of the 60 millimeter mark that way you know it's cut at 58 millimeters your pupils are going to be directly behind those red dots so let me peel this sticker off stick it on the counter like I like to do put this in the lensometer the axis wheel is still set for 150. I'm going to check that it now reads minus four and a quarter. Then I'm going to check your astigmatism correction. I look in there, line everything up. I'm actually getting four and a quarter. This is that, there's 450. And then actually, as if I spin this one more time to check your astigmatism, I end up just shy of the 450 mark, if you can see that where my thumbnail is. So that is good. I'm going to clean this up and then one more thing I'm going to do before shipping is to put it on the counter to make sure it's in standard alignment meaning when I set my thumbs down nothing wobbles it's in a three-point stance one two and the bottom of the frame being three there is no wobble on the counter I flip it over I do the same thing on both sides I close each hinge to make sure it overlaps perfectly over the other and to make sure that there's the same amount of torsion tension tension on the spring hinges which there is so now I want to take a tissue and use my optical grade acetone to clean the red dots off of your lenses. Where's my cloth? Where's my cleaning cloth? Of course, you're going to get a Ray-Ban cleaning cloth with your case. Whenever this gets dirty, which is about once a month, just wash it at the kitchen sink with dish soap and then rinse out your cloth. 
with clean water and just let it air dry on a dish towel or a paper towel after you've rinsed it off. The older it gets, the softer it will get, the better it will clean. But Cynthia from Argentina, I really appreciate you purchasing your glasses for me. You could have gotten them from anyone, but you got them from the guy who gives you free prescription lenses. Well played, madame. Well played indeed. If anyone else has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or click the contact me button on the, if you're at the website, I'll be get back to you very quickly. Everyone else, I hope you enjoyed watching me put lenses into her glasses. And now you have seen how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.